Welcome back to STEM Talk. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Today's episode is going to be about the tech classes we offer in the Livingston School District. We have three different teachers coming on today, a elementary school tech teacher, middle school, and high school. Our first guest today is Mr. Graw, the STEAM and tech coach teacher at the elementary schools. Mr. Graw, how are you doing today? Good, thanks for having me, I'm excited. Yeah, all right, so do you want to talk a little bit about what you do at the school? Yeah, so I'm a tech coach at the elementary schools mm -hmm. and a STEAM teacher. Yep. So a tech coach, what we do is implement technology in the classroom mm -hmm. by working with teachers, collaborating with them, yep. and going into their classrooms to help the kids mm -hmm. with tech tools. Then as a STEAM teacher, there's K through five STEAM once a week for each child. So just like any elective like phys ed or art, they get STEAM once a week. Right, so I do want to focus on those STEAM classes. So first of all, when did it actually start? Because I know it's fairly new. Yeah, last year was our first year implementing it. Wow, wow. Um, so obviously our show's called STEM Talk. Right. Um, what is that A in STEAM? So that's actually art. So we focus uh -huh. on the design portion and that's new because we, it's like every subject except a couple. Right. Um, so science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Yeah, wow. Um, so obviously the used to be art classes are now part of that STEAM, what do they call them in the elementary schools? The uh, like gym, uh, you have oh, art. Specials. The specials, yes. right, okay. So, so now art's part of that STEAM special? It's part of it, but they still get art oh, separate. Okay. Yeah, okay. so this is a combination mm -hmm. of all that. Yeah, so obviously like I just said, there's specials in the elementary school, so did they just add STEAM onto that gym? Are Spanish specials? Yep, so uh, the kids cycle through mm -hmm. each one. So one day a week they'll come to us for STEAM. Yeah, wow, that's obviously amazing. Uh, I can't believe kindergartners are already starting to like get into that mm -hmm. STEAM and all that. Because I know when I went to school and everyone in my grade, uh, I think the first STEM class was what, uh, sixth grade, I think? Okay. I don't think we had anything in the elementary school. So yeah. amazing opportunity that STEAM is. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like what you guys actually do in STEAM? Like maybe what's like the highlight of the year? What's the best activity that you guys do? Yes, yeah, so we break up into four units this year. Mm -hmm. um, we focus on being a maker yep. and we focus on inclusivity, mm -hmm. inclusivity yep. um, as well as coding. That's what my favorite part is, yeah. the coding unit. We just got some robots, they're called Edison robots. Mm -hmm. They're little square robots um, that we can program. Oh wow. Um, and then the fourth unit is about Climate change. Climate change, wow. Um, so that coding unit, are you just, obviously, everyone has their own Chromebook, right? Yes, so yeah. even kindergartners have their own Chromebook. Yeah. So they're all just like, I'm assuming there's an application that they go on and they could actually like program these tiny robots to do, I'm assuming, like specific tasks? Yeah, so we start from the beginning mm -hmm. with unplugged coding. Right. So we bring out the little bee bots mm -hmm. that they can program without a computer. Oh, wow. And then we build it up. There's actually a bee bot app Mm -hmm. that students can work on during class and mm -hmm. then on their own time. And then we move on to Scratch Junior. Right. Then we moved on to um, Ed Blocks, which is the Edison mm -hmm. version yeah. of kind of like Scratch Junior where it's just drag and drop. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to more of the higher level, like regular Scratch. Wow, that, I mean, the fact that like, that's even an opportunity in elementary schools, I know I already said this, that's incredible. Uh, do you happen to see that the kids enjoy that also that unit the most or like is there another unit they like? I think being a maker so they get to build maker. during mm -hmm. that. So, so what we, do you build? Yeah we give them tasks mm -hmm. and for example we have Legos, blocks, mm -hmm. all these different tasks to like either make a maze yeah. and we try to incorporate a challenge in there like mm -hmm. our mascot is called Izzy and uh -huh. Izzy the bird or the weaver bird yeah. um, she can build you know her her nest by right. herself so we talk about that mm -hmm. and how like build a maze to get Izzy back home things like that mm -hmm. um, for the little so it's all about like actually building and designing right exactly right. we always mm -hmm. do our design loop model mm -hmm. so we ask so we ask the problem what are we trying to solve yeah. then we brainstorm together um, then we design what we want mm -hmm. as a team and right. then we start building and we always look at how to re reflect so mm -hmm. How can we work together to improve the next time we do this? Right, and you said the last unit is climate change, right? Yes. So how do you teach kids that, right? Because they're so young, I mean, how do right. you go around doing that? Yeah, so we haven't gotten to that unit yet, mm -hmm. but it's more of like um, 
climate and utilizing things mm -hmm. that have already been made so like uh, recycling to create stuff right. so um, we're going to talk a little bit about climate change and then yeah. create things like um, that we've upcycled okay. so um, I know we're going to make a project with old t-shirts mm -hmm. cut them up and use them repurpose them so it's all about that reuse recycle and all that exactly of course ah yeah yep uh, that's I mean again amazing opportunity that that's in the STEAM curriculum uh, I know before the show you actually said that obviously it was made last year but the curriculum's already different so what did they change in that one year I'm assuming they learned new stuff right? yeah so we have different bands they're called so okay. K kindergarten and first grade mm -hmm. learn the same okay second and third le learn the same right fourth and fifth so what we do is alternate the years mm -hmm. so that this year's brand new units. Mm -hmm. Next year, we'll do the same thing that we did last year, okay. but they'll be in a new band at that point. Right, so every two years, you get new curriculum, or not new curriculum, like a new band, right? Right, so we have an A, B schedule. Mm -hmm. So this year we're on B, next year we'll go back to A, oh, wow. but by then, mm -hmm. the kids will be in the upper band learning like more advanced things. Yeah, and now, again, obviously it was created last year, what do you think um, made the district want to actually incorporate a class like this into the elementary schools? I think they see the future in STEM yeah. um, and STEAM as well. Mm -hmm. um, just like seeing what you guys do in the high school with robotics, mm -hmm. like how can we get there? Yeah. How can we get the kids to be like that and maybe even more advanced? Right, to start earlier. Yeah, exactly, yeah. start earlier and the technology is growing so much. Mm -hmm. Like We get new tech tools all the time that we want to be able to implement yeah. and there's hardly any time in the day, but if we can have a whole period focused on that, mm -hmm. then th their learning potential is increased. Yeah, so I would say the high school, we have a huge tech department mm -hmm. uh, with a bunch of different materials, machines, and everything like that. I know you did talk about you had those robots and everything. Do mm -hmm. you have any other cool machines, like a uh, 3D printer or something at the elementary schools? We don't have 3D printers yet, mm -hmm. um, but we are looking for like more initiatives in the future. Yeah. So we're starting out with what we have and then building upon it each year. Right. So um, we're looking to get more robots, different types of robots. Yeah. Like we might have Ozobots next year or something okay. similar, Those are cool. Spheros possibly. Yeah. Um, we're really trying to improve as we go. Right. Uh, I'm really excited for the future. Yeah. So again, uh, brand new. Yeah. How are you guys, are you just learning while you go or is there another school that you guys are kind of basing off your curriculum from? Like, how are you even yeah. Good question. generating ideas? Like, yeah. I, I don't even, it's a new course, right? Right, so yeah. a core of us have been writing the curriculum over mm -hmm. the summer. Okay. So last summer, we wrote this current um, curriculum. So I actually wrote unit three for the coding. Okay. So I had time to research some ideas, mm -hmm. brainstorm, put it together. Yeah. And then we actually have professional development days where we meet with our colleagues, teach the other STEAM teachers mm -hmm. as well, because actually we have a ton of STEAM teachers, mm -hmm. art teachers, we have the GT teachers, right. tech coaches, media specialists, mm -hmm. all of us are teaching the same class. Right. So we get together and whoever wrote the curriculum teaches them just as mm -hmm. they're the students and make sure that we cover everything before they have to teach it to wow. their kids. Wow, I mean, I know I've said this probably <laughs> 10 times at this point, but wow, I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome that they're starting so young. Yeah. Uh, so when you were writing that curriculum, um, have you seen other, like, do you think Livingston's one of the first to do something like this in an elementary school, or have you seen other schools try to start incorporating uh, STEAM? I think we're probably one of the first, but there mm -hmm. are definitely other districts yeah. doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's interesting to see maybe where they're at yeah. and what, like, different kind of units that they're covering. Right. Yeah. I mean, hopefully that people, you know, schools that are close by and hopefully even further start kind of learning and, like, gaining a STEAM course yeah. into like their elementary schools because I think that's an amazing opportunity mm -hmm. like I've said numerous times <laughs> uh, so a little more about you now okay. uh, how did you start getting interested in STEM yeah I've had a weird background I was mm -hmm. actually a phys ed teacher for five years okay um, uh -huh. so I went to the College of New Jersey All to right. be a phys ed teacher mm -hmm. I grew up with sports was very competitive mm -hmm. and into that um, and then when I got to be a health and PE teacher, I really got involved with my health classes mm -hmm. on how to implement technology. Mm -hmm. My mom was a marketing and tech. Um, like digital teacher. media? Or? Yes, exactly, yeah. digital media. So mm -hmm. um, I had a little bit of background like Photoshop and stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. So 
I was able to take the programs that we had at school yeah. and play with it mm -hmm. to learn. So I taught myself and then wow. I would change the lessons for health. I hated teaching from the textbook. Yeah. I wanted it to be interactive and fun. Mm -hmm. So I made it self-paced for seventh grade health, wow. made it um, interactive, like mm -hmm. breakout EDU, yeah. challenges. Um, mm -hmm. And then eventually I was like, I could keep doing this. So I got my master's yeah. in educational technology. And then um, I had the opportunity to teach a couple courses like film studies where mm -hmm. we were video editing. Mm -hmm. And finally, my last year as a phys ed teacher, they asked me to teach robotics and coding. Wow. And that, that's a big leap. But that was a obviously huge with everything you've done, like it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and there was really, um, there wasn't a curriculum. Right. So I built it from scratch. I learned um, like when I was at home yeah. and um, we did some programming. And this is a COVID year also, right? Yes. Wow. So it, we were in school for half days. Mm -hmm. So we were doing virtual robot um, coding mm -hmm. um, with Go uh, Coder Z, it's called, Coder mm -hmm. Z. Um, so we would do some at school, but half the kids would be at home. So they right. would be on their Chromebooks doing it. And then I also had VEX robots mm -hmm. at that school. So I would take them out, set them up, give them like a scenario, like how mm -hmm. can this robot get from here to here? Yeah. And I would stream it so kids at home still saw it, saw mm -hmm. the arena or wow. the field, yeah. um, and could figure out how to code it. Then we'd come together, plug it in, and see if it worked. OK, well, <laughs> that is incredible. I'm glad something came out of that wild year of yeah. COVID and hybrid learning and all of that. So that's amazing. Um, <laughs> thank you for talking to me about the elementary schools and what you guys do in those STEAM classes. Uh, that's all the time we got for this segment, but we got an awesome segment coming up next with Mr. Zushma uh, in Heritage. So uh, take it away, Rafi. Hi, my name is Rafi Steinberg. We're here at Heritage Middle School with Mr. Zushma. Can you please introduce yourself? So I'm Ken Zushma. I'm a, one of the technology education teachers here at Heritage Middle School, and uh, welcome to the Tech Lab. Thank you. So, Mr. Zushma, what changes or what is the current curriculum here at Heritage Middle School? The current curriculum here at Heritage Middle School is uh, for seventh and eighth graders. Seventh graders study design and fabrication. They learn how to use tools and machines. Eighth graders study systems. They use those same tools and machines to build stuff that works. That's great. Um, what changes over the years as new STEM education has been pushed throughout the district? What has changed here at Heritage? The integration of the subjects. So where we used to be kind of all on our own, uh, we are now seeing uh, an infusion of concepts from math and science to the point where we've even brought those teachers into the labs with us. So when we do a rocket design challenge, we'll bring a science teacher down to talk the actual rocket science. And if we need to know how high that rocket's going in the air, we bring a math teacher down and talk to us about calculating some angles. So being able to integrate those subjects in a way where the students are actually building stuff has been really valuable to us. Speaking of the students building stuff, what's happening behind us? So behind us right now, you guys have excellent timing because we are just about ready to go to the National Engineers Week Future City Design Challenge. And the Future City Design Challenge is one of the best integrative STEM competitions that I'm aware of. Students design and build the city of the future. It starts with a research essay, it continues with a scale model build, and then a presentation to engineer judges. And all of this is in the guides of solving a real world problem and usually it's humanitarian based. So they are looking at effects of climate change, mitigations and adaptations, and each one of the groups behind us has selected a climate change impact. And they've uh, decided to model it and be able to show how in the future we might be able to live with and then eventually mitigate that problem. That's great, and it's crazy. What great, what great is behind us? So this right is now? for both seventh and eighth graders, um, and there's a fair mix of students behind us. Uh, a lot of times, our eighth graders are returning, and they had done it in the year before, and uh, they're looking to, you know, give it another shot. Our competitions are at Rutgers University uh, in every January. So, were there any factors or a specific reason you chose to be at Heritage Middle School over other places in the district? Well, I knew when I was uh, in college that I wanted to work in Livingston. Uh, one of my professors was a supervisor here and uh, you know, really talked it up pretty well. And uh, once I got um, working uh, in district, I was started as a lead replacement. I uh, worked as a lead replacement actually right here in this room for a year and a half, then taught at the high school for a couple of years and then came back to the past 18 years have been right here in this room. And uh, over that time, you know, we've seen some uh, you know, some changes in faces, but most of the student initiatives have stayed the same and everybody's motivated and, and looking to work and having a good time. So uh, Livingston's been a great place and it's been really good to me. That's great. Um, so you've been at LHS and you've been at Heritage. Which one do you prefer more? 
Uh, I don't think I actually have a preference. Obviously, I'm, you know, I'm, my heart's at Heritage because I've been here for so long. Uh, but there's different reasons why um, each school has uh, has special places in my heart. Uh, working at Livingston High School, obviously, I can do more advanced things because uh, you know our students are uh, a little bit more advanced and they have uh, you know a little bit more access to machinery that they're not allowed to use here yet. But here at Heritage, there's a there's a certain vibe where. Um, they're really uh, wanting to do well, and they're willing to have a go. They're not quite as reserved, like, well, what if it doesn't work? You know, I, I see a, a little bit more of a let's try it and see here at a slightly younger age, but the trade-off is sometimes we don't get to go as deep into the content. So uh, both really awesome places for two different reasons. It's almost like a perfect opportunity to introduce STEM and introduce that STEM initiative for future learners. Yeah, see, so this type of class, this technology education class, is really um, what it's really one of the only places in the district where we can, without very much effort, integrate these classes. Because what's happening here is that E in STEM. And a lot of districts struggle with the engineering aspect because they have strong science and they have strong math and they have a strong technology program. But being able to actually design and build, and plan and document, and test and evaluate, that doesn't come easy to a lot of districts. Livingston's unique because they start in sixth grade uh, with their technology education program at Mr. Sadwinick. They come up here to seventh and eighth grade and they continue what they're learning. And what they're able to do at the high school with that information, whether it's Shell Eco Marathon or the first robotics teams, or even just the tech and design for science and engineering classes, they're onto amazing things. So it's a, it's a great linear progression for them. And it's great to see Livingston progressing in the STEM education. Um, we've talked with um, elementary school teachers about their um, progression in STEM education. And it's truly great the direction Livingston's going. Yeah, and you know, we're starting to see some of the dividends that are paying off from the integration of STEM in the elementary schools because a lot of these uh, students that are elementary school students haven't been exposed to the actual design process yet. So having that happening a little bit earlier is making Mr. S's course able to go a little bit further because he's spending less time covering some of those basics. And that's starting to filter up here to us too. And I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with that. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Um, I hope STEM keeps progressing in the direction it does as today. Um, thanks so much for talking with us. Livingston leads the way, so it'll definitely keep progressing. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome back. Uh, obviously, that was an amazing segment. We got to talk a little bit to Mr. Zushma and got to hear about what he's doing in the middle school. But now we have Mr. Yerzak on, the uh, technology teacher at the high school. He's going to talk a little bit about what technology does at the high school uh, and how pre he prepares people, uh, obviously, for the future and like, their yeah. career, basically, right? So uh, do you want to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what you do at the school? Sure. Hi. Uh, my name is Mr. Yerzak. I've been a teacher here at Livingston High School for 12 years now. Um, I'm part of our tech depart uh, technology design and engineering department. Um, I love what I do. It's a <laughs> great job to give kids really a real world experience into the world of STEM mm -hmm. um, and everything that has to deal with technology design and engineering. Yeah. So, you know, starting way back in the beginning, what first got you uh, interested in being a tech teacher? Ah, so it's interesting. I come from a family of engineers. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I was assumed <laughs> I was going to be an uh -huh, engineer yeah. um, in, that, in that retrospect. Yep. Um, but it wasn't until later in high school, um, my own tech ed teacher, Mr. Right. Condorso, um, started looking and seeing solid potential in me as we've gone along. He's like, what okay. would you think about doing what I do? And I thought about it myself, and I was yeah. like, it's a really cool job. Yeah. Like, I get to build things, <laughs> teach kids, and, yeah. Yeah, and all this cool stuff there. So it got me right into it. So I started looking at schools and applying for there, and I went, ended up at Millersville University, which is an amazing school for being a tech ed teacher. Uh -huh. um, and from there, I made my way back to New Jersey. I ended up here in Livingston, ironically, because my uh, college roommate actually lived in Caldwell, right next oh, door. Wow. And I was like, oh, there's a job. Wow. Livingston, why don't you try yeah. it there? It's a really nice big school. I was like, that's right, lucky. go. And then yeah. I ended up here. That works. That's perfect. Oh my Rest God. Wow. <laughs> uh, so now, what classes are you teaching as a tech uh, teacher? Mm -hmm. So uh, I've teach a lot of classes mm -hmm. over the years, but the predominant ones that I'm teaching this year are tech and design one, two, and three, okay. um, which you've been in one from yep. before as well, yep. um, and engineer. our electronics and computer science engineering class. Right. And in the past, I've taught mm -hmm. our architecture CAD classes, mm -hmm. our engineering CAD, robotics, right. uh, you name it. So a whole different gambit of fields, um, but that's really what I'm teaching this year of classes. Do you have a favorite course that you like to teach? I don't like to pick favorites, uh -huh. but for my own personality, I really enjoy um, tech and design. It's, it's 
Yeah. It's a great I mean, that's an amazing, like, first of all, it's pretty general across the spectrum, and you get to, like, learn skills that you could actually apply. Mm -hmm. Like, and I know when I took it, I, like, still use the skills now, because mm -hmm. it's just, it, it covers such a broad spectrum. And then I'm glad you said, because yeah. that's, that's what makes me with tech and design, like, mm -hmm. so proud of what I put yeah. together and what they to give you real, real world experience and skills mm -hmm. so that they last a lifetime. Those experiences, I'm sure I hope you remember yep. a lot of the projects we go through yeah. that class. Even though I was a COVID year. So <laughs> it wasn't as amazing as I tried been. to make the best yeah. that we can in the little time yep. scenario we had, but yep. it was still, we got through some stuff. Yeah, for sure. Good. Um, so obviously what makes you different from our previous people we have interviewed is you are the high school teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you tell us a little bit about how maybe you do things a little differently to actually prepare people for not even going into the next year of school, like Mr. Dushma and Mr. Gra does, mm -hmm. but like college and their career. So mm -hmm. how do you think about that when you're planning your classes and what you need to teach before they actually uh, mm -hmm. graduate? Well, I'd like to give a shout out to them because they set the foundation, right. um, which is really nice and beautiful to see yep. here at Livingston that mm -hmm. we have that from elementary to middle school. Yep. They do a phenomenal job getting you ready, getting you experienced into this, mm -hmm. getting you some skill sets there. Uh, when we get to high school, it's all about trying to make it real world, what it's right. going to be like when you're in career field. So yes. when you see, we try to bring in equipment and mm -hmm. skill sets that we see that are moving and that are always changing, because yeah. that's the beauty of the STEM field is mm -hmm. What's in today can right. be changed and obsolete tomorrow. It's true. Um, you see it in the TV studio, I'm sure, mm -hmm. everywhere else too as well. So trying to give them that 100%. real world experience and skills. Uh, one of the big ones we like to focus on a lot of times in our classes that you start to see as the time is those like soft skills of yes. what make you marketable in the career field um, of learning critical thinking mm -hmm. skills, how to problem solve, yep. how to communicate, working in groups with people that you've never experienced before. And a lot of our classes, it's nice at the high school, they're mm -hmm. freshmen through senior, right. so that you have that really eclectic mix of students of trying to come up and how do we work together. Um, we are obviously different interest groups yep. and things like that. To, we have to come up with a project and problem to solve it. Yeah, um, so I actually have a question. Across all your different classes that you teach, do you find it that the kids, or do you find it that kids that were not interested in tech and design maybe take that first intro class and are like, wow, maybe I do want to do this as a career? Because obviously, the tech classes they've taken in the past, you know, it's not been as uh, detailed and more, again, general ideas. But when you get into the high school and you do take that more detailed class, do you see kids that are like, whoa, wait, maybe I do want to do this? I think, honestly, we do, even yeah. just not out of my own tech and design class, but most of our instructional classes. Right. Um, we have some kids that you can obviously see that from the get-go, they want to be an engineer, they want to be some sort of product designer, yeah. um, or some sort of STEM-related field. Um, but I definitely do see a lot of kids that will, after they go through that, they kind of had this, mm -hmm. like, their hesitancy, and then also they're like, oh, this is really cool. This is, like, I really want to do that. And that's the nice thing about with tech and design. Um, it's just kind of picking up what Mr. Zushma does at the middle school, yeah. but let's, we have a full year to expand right. upon it to learn some more skills, try some different yeah. areas to dabble into, because it's a generalized tech course. Mm -hmm. So we'll, you'll go into a little electronics, you'll learn a little bit about uh, design engineering, looking at structures. So kind of giving the gambit of a yeah. lot of different area fields. And I've definitely seen a lot of kids that go there, and then I have definitely the repeats to come back for the second level and yep. the third level. Um, and that's really where you kind of get the growth across the students from freshman year all the way to senior. Right. Um, so obviously you teach freshman to senior. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think it hurts to start later in a high schooler's career to do a tech and design class? Or do you think, you know, one year taking it is, like, still helpful? I don't think necessarily it hurts. Yeah. Um, it's always beneficial to start earlier Obviously. when you can there, um, just in the time frame. But mm -hmm. everyone marks at their own pace. And right. your interest, sometimes it doesn't hit you because um, you didn't have the experience. Yeah. And that's, like, the one thing that we really like to strive, especially at the high school, is giving you real-world experiences because yep. those experiences put in your memory bank right. and you start to remember like, oh, this is something that I, I definitely think I want to do mm -hmm. and I want to pursue it and you try to pursue it more. So I don't think it hurts. Like sometimes, you know, when you're a freshman, no. you might not be thinking about what your career exactly. field down the road is. Yep. Um, slowly as you get closer to mm -hmm. senior year, then you're like, all right, well, I have to start figuring yes. out what do I want to do with yep. my life yep. um, kind of thing. And that's just what naturally every senior, and you don't have to yep. always know, but yeah, you can start later on. And mm -hmm. um, once you have that, like, grab onto that area yeah. and dive deeper, see what you like about it and truly grow into it a little bit more. And if that's where you wanna go, keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we definitely have the experience, like I have plenty of kids in tech and design that don't take it until senior year. Right. Um, and then enjoy it anyway, even yeah. though it's just, it's been four years and they didn't get to it. Mm -hmm. And the kids that have came to you to actually ask about, hey, I wanna get into tech, 
not only in college but as a career, do you have advice for them when it's their senior year and they're trying to either prepare to get into a college or just prepare to get a job in the engineering field? Oh, definitely. Um, some definitely some good skill sets. I would definitely recommend any classes that you can take, whether your math classes, your science mm -hmm. classes that are going to help prepare you for that. Yeah. Taking our, us as elective to kind of really see what the design and engineering field is kind of like yep. is great. Um, but really, it's get those experiences, um, go see what the career field's like, and really see if is this something that you want to see yourself doing. Go meet with an engineer that's in that field. Mm -hmm. um, that really, truly helps you kind of gain that knowledge, that real world experience. Yeah. Um, and see, okay, is that what I'm doing with the rest of my life? Yeah, 100% fair. Um, now, kind of backpedaling a little bit. Okay. Um, obviously, you've been teaching for some time now as a tech teacher. <laughs> Crazy me to think, but it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think are like the greatest or most visible like changes, and uh, not only the curriculum, but actually like the machinery or anything? Like, has there been a change that you've been like, wow, I can't like looking back, this is incredible that. It used to be like this, and now it's different. It's in our field. It's kind of actually one of those unique gamuts have gone back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, I would say like now we're spending a little bit more time going back to a lot of the skills of doing the hands-on stuff of right. using tools and machines to gain mm -hmm. that experience because some of that may have fell to the wayside a little yeah. bit for there. But we've also seen introducing cool machinery that we've yeah. never had before. Um, I remember when I was in high school, that's when 3D printers were just starting to make. I like, love kind 3D of a printers, they're amazing. I'm very, I break yeah. into the area, uh -huh. and like especially at school things, because mm -hmm. it starts at like business industry yeah. and collegiate and works its way down. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I was lucky, like my senior of high school, they had one 3D printer um, through a grant system. And it was cool, and it, it was cool to see, and it was like it worked um, there, and we got to see like, oh, this is really cool, because I yeah. did before that we used to have to do like paper stack and oh my God. to make a three. It was wow. a long process, and now it's like 12 years into teaching, we started out with one machine, and uh -huh. now I have like a whole room of them, yeah. um, and kids can just walk over mm -hmm. and take their ideas, cat it out, put it there, and print it out right yeah. there, and they have a working prototype, yeah. uh, which is awesome to see. I, I mean, I obviously I am uh, on the robotics team. I could say like. 3D printers have been a godsend. Like they're just absolutely incredible. For all those like custom yeah. parts that you need something to try out mm -hmm. really quickly, print it. Next yep. day you can put it on, test it out, and see how it goes. Yeah, it's great. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, sitting down and talking a little bit about what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you love this episode. I'll see you next week or next month actually. <laughs>